Hello, this is poor Nilsson with Random Art Attack. And Christmas has come early for all of us because ZBrush 2020 is now available. In this tutorial, we're going to be going through and looking at all the different features found in ZBrush 2020. There are a lot of them. And so even though I take about a minute to two minutes at the most to talk about these different things, I will link below some timestamps so that you can kind of skip around and find the ones you want. But I strongly encourage you to go through, again, it's not that long of a tutorial, I encourage you to go through and watch all of this because they build on one another. As you see features in one, they're kind of duplicating the features of another thing. So it's useful just to see everything. The first feature we're going to be talking about is the silhouette feature right here. As you can change it, you can see the different silhouettes and this is good for making sure that your form is, is good. If you hold control, you can drag that. That's the biggest it can get. Or you can hold shift and it'll zoom in. Now it's pixelated and it's not anti-alias, so uh, use it at your own risk. If you want more changes to this, you can go up to Preferences and then go down to Thumbnail. You can toggle that on and off. You can also turn off the silhouette like that and you can magnify it, change the size, change the background, and you can also export this as a thumbnail, which we're not going to do at this time. So I'm gonna change that back and holding control, just zoom that in like that. The next feature we're gonna be talking about is the cam view. It allows you to be able to see the direction that your object or your sculpt is facing, but you need to make sure that it's oriented with the front facing towards the blue Z axis. Otherwise, it's not gonna match this. If you click the different arrows, you can see that it can actually change the different views. So you can get the side views, the top views, the bottom views. You just double click to get the alternate one. And it's really cool because as you turn, you can also get these partials like that. Now, how you can access the different functions is the same as before. You go to Preferences, Cam View. You can toggle that on and off, just like the quick, uh, the silhouette. You can change the size, you can go to Next. This one's horrible. It's a camera, but uh, I, I don't think it looks very good. So there you go, whatever. And let's go ahead and go back up and look some more. You can actually make a camera view for your thing. So here we have you can see that it's actually the same model. So if you have a different model that you want to do, you can do that, but it doesn't have the functionality to be able to rotate it. Now we're gonna be talking about the draft analysis. What this does is if you're trying to mill something, it lets you know what, what's problematic and what's not. Trying to find it is actually really hard too. So what you need to do is you go up to um, transform and then there's this little icon, draw draft analysis. And so everything that's green is good and it can draft it out, but everything that is red is going to be problematic and you need to try to maybe extrude that down to make it flush so that there's no overhangs for the machine to mill. Now, I personally am not going to be using this that much, but there's a lot of different practi practicality within ZBrush. You saw right there what I did is I went ahead and I just set the new direction of the camera and that functionality, again, you're gonna see repeated over and over and over again. Uh, you can invert di direction and there's a bunch of other options. Go ahead and play around with that. If you are going to go ahead and mill something out, this might be useful, but for most of us, we're not gonna use this. The next one is going to be the poly paint from thickness. So if you go ahead and click this, it will show all the thick areas. So blue is good. Yellow is going to be slightly problematic and red's gonna be really problematic. You can change the thickness depending on your 3D printer because that's typically what this is gonna be used for. So for example, if it's a really small model, there might be a lot more problematic areas like that, depending. But if you need to change the scale, you can also go to the Z plugins, Scale Master, change the different scales to get the model to be the exact size and you can play around with this. You can also mask through this as well, which is gonna be really useful. For example, if I want to mask all these small red point or all these small points, I can change the minimum, get those red points and then I can mask and color and, and smooth or do anything I need. So it's not just functional within 3D printing, even though that's primarily what it's used for. The next one is from draft. Now, same as the draft view, you can set the direction of the camera and then you can hit colorize. It takes a little bit of time and everything that was in front is going to be colored green and everything that is colored in the back is going to be red. And so you can do this to just maybe add some dirt layers, anything like that. You can also, you can mask by color, so you can also mask through this, even though there's better functionality for that. And so here you can see, I just set the camera direction and I got a different color thing. And so it might be useful, but that same functionality is gonna be repeated in the masking section as well. So let's go to masking, mask by draft. 
This I personally think is much more useful. So I hit the set the direction, hit mask. It'll take a little bit of time, but there you can see everything that was in front was masked. Very useful if you're just trying to maybe flatten something like those feet there or anything of that nature. Add dirt, maybe add some textures or, or highlights from underneath. Very useful. The next feature we're going to be looking at is adjust colors. So you go to the poly paint and then just click adjust colors right here. And it's going to give you a lot of different options. Your figure, first of all, has to have poly paint, obviously. But down here, you have a lot of control over just changing the hue, saturation values and intensity, things of that nature. You can tint it. You can do the RGB intensity. So basically, you get color curves, more or less of what you want to change with the gammas, the, the different contrasts. But the cool thing is if you go up here, select this box and drag, you can select a color that it will mask, and then you can, you can basically increase or decrease the tolerance, and then edit the different colors that you've selected only. So it's masked everything but this. If you have a very complex scene, you can do up to eight of these. So you can see I just selected the tattoos, you can turn them on and off. So if you don't want to change the skin and just to change the tattoos, you can do that. And it has a lot of different functionality. Now, if you hit OK, it will apply both the mask and the color change to the model itself. Something that is very similar to this, there is a color only or a masking only. So if you go to the masking property right here, go to mask by color, mask by poly paint, and you get all the same options except the different color saturation hue. You don't need to change those. And so it just basically lets you select up to eight different masks, and then you can change the intensity. You can blur this. You can do anything you want, like tolerance, not intensity, excuse me. And this, this model is kind of hard to see because there's basically only two colors, the primary skin color and then the tattoo colors. But things with multiple colors, you would be able to have a lot of fine control. So if you want to select via masks, I mean via colors, this is very, very useful. And then all you have to do again is hit OK, and it will apply it to the mesh itself like that. And you can edit and work with all the different masks that you have. And the cool thing is if you need more masks, you can actually put color around the place and then do it that way. The next thing we're gonna do is called UV map. So here in the panel, there's something called UV map, morph UV, excuse me. And you can see that it will morph it down to a two dimensional thing. If it has a bump map, you can increase that, you can decrease that. But what this is useful for is as you draw on this, you can get to areas that you normally couldn't otherwise. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw something and then we're going to so see how this actually looks on the model itself. So that's not going to be perfect, but you can see that it might go around the arm. So if you have cylinder geometry or anything that it's going to be hard, go ahead and just, you could draw stitches, you could draw clothes lines, whatever you want, morph that back down. And you can see that it wraps around smoothly around the model without having to kind of draw and then t turn your model, draw, turn your model, and have these artifacts. You can just have these smooth things. So if you're really good at actually creating your view UV map to be smooth and lined up, I mean, this one's kind of wonky, right? You can actually do straight lines. Now, something you do need to be careful of is it's very strong. So right here, it doesn't look like it's very strong, but as I <laughs> go back to my normal view, you can see how a very small, simple brush will be exaggerated because it's flattening this, so even a small little bulge is gonna be huge in comparison to that. So you want to make sure when you're working on this to work with low tool settings. All right, the next thing is the uh, deco brush. You hit B and then D, and there's two different ones. There is curve dots and there's curve drag. Each of them have their own functionality, so we're gonna look at both. So let's go ahead and draw a curve here. Uh. <laughs> let's move to a different side, here we go. So here's a curve, as you drag, this, you can see that it starts to draw. So I'm holding shift while I drag this. And holding shift will basically pull this out. Now, if you don't hold shift, if you just drag it, you'll also see that it, uh, let's go to the front side here. <laughs> you can see as I drag this, there we go. It'll actually start to draw as I drag. Here, let me show you. There we go. And so this would be really good for making roots or veins or hair or anything of that nature. And you can see that it's really cool. Now the other method, I frankly, the other brush I think is more useful than the, than the dot drag, it's the curve drag. And as you do it, it'll keep the curve maintained until you let go 
and then apply a new brush. So you can actually position this exactly where you want. You can increase the strength. You can mess it up like I did just there. But these two brushes are really cool. You don't have to do arrows. You can do pretty much any kind of shape or alpha that you want. But this is really, really useful, again, with hair. Here, I just changed the intensity so you can see this a little bit better. I could do this with hair to get a lot of details. You can do this with concrete cracks. The possibilities really are endless. It is a very, very useful brush and is one of my favorite new features. Not my favorite, but one of my favorite. The next feature we're gonna be looking at is the From Brush. You find it in Alpha and then click From Brush. And what it does is it will take the alpha of whatever you drag. So as I drag this here, let me do this. It's gonna take the alpha behind this and put it inside the brush. Um, let's go ahead and try and get some of this ribbing here or this plating. I just drag that. If you hit G, you don't have to go to the, the alpha. So it's a shortcut. And you can see that it's just really quick of getting this. You can change different br brushes. So if I do dots, for example, I hit G and then I drag this up. It's getting all this different dot information as I go up. But now as I drag it, you can see it only, it's using the standard brush, so it's, it's a little finicky. The extractor is going to be basically using this functionality. And so you, with the extractor, we're gonna talk about that later, but it does basically this. Now, this is cool for just basically blocking out repeated textures, seeing what you like. You can actually build different textures from this by layering the same texture on itself. So it's a really, really cool brush or feature. The next thing, we're gonna be talking about the hatch brush. Now, if you go back and forth like this, you can see how it zigzags, but the hatch brush is going to make it so that it doesn't build up where you don't want it. It's just basically gonna do parallel things like this. So what you can do is you can go to stroke, you can turn on no back and forth, and now as you go, I'm holding my brush this whole time and it's just basically really fast and it gives this hatch mark. The other way to do it is go to brush, H, and then do hatch. And now as you do it, again, I'm not letting go, I'm just holding my mouse as I'm going back and forth. And so it's building up this nice consistency. The next feature is so cool, it's called the history recall. And what it'll do, it'll take the undo history and it'll map it to another shape. They need to be similar size and shapes though. So the first thing you wanna do is kind of make sure that this is scaled to be about the same because it's gonna try and match the geometry to the vertices in the 3D space. Now that they're about the same space, I go to the face that I want to save. So I go to the undo history that I wanna save, I hold control and click it, and now go back to my other mesh. And with the history recall brush, it will try to match um, the history from the history controlled right there. And isn't that so cool? Now. It needs to be about the same size so that it fits. If it's not, it's gonna to start to get some artifacts and it's gonna look really, really strange. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like as well. So let's go ahead and change the size here. Just a second, sorry. Losing my, I'm just looking at how cool that is. All right, let's change the size here. Okay, now as I try and do it, you can see it's trying to fit the vertices to where it's, it was in the bigger one, and you start to get these really weird things. So this would be good. You can bring in a new model, try to scale it up to the same size of the thing that you would otherwise, and then you can start to play around with it that way, and it's really good that way. The next thing we're gonna be looking at is the Move Infinite Brush. Typically, if you have the Move Brush and you try and move something like this, it's gonna kind of move in a cone, right? Well, what if I wanted to move the whole entire head up or a whole entire thing across the whole model? You go to the Move Infinite Brush, and then as you drag it, it'll move everything behind it as well in a straight line like that. So this is really cool. Um, if you do it too small though, you can see that it tries its best, but there's some artifacting that goes on a little bit. So you can play around with that, see what you want. I'm, I'm seeing this in hard surface modeling a lot where I want to just maybe move a chassis forward instead of trying to move the different points. I can just move one thing and I'll move everything in a line. And it's gonna be very useful. Um, and you can get some really strange effects. Check this out. <laughs> it's, it's kind of creepy. Let's uh, undo that and never talk about that again. Okay, the next thing is going to be the 
projecting from undo history. So let's pretend that I go and I, I take this and I'm basically flattening this. I don't like what it's looking like. And I'm playing around with this. And I see, you know what? I actually like this portion, but I hate this portion. So I can go back to my undo history, hit control, click, and now it'll save that. Let's go ahead and mask what I want to uh, save. So I'm masking this, I want to save that. Go down to, in the subtools, project, project, project history. The distance, you might want to play around with that a little bit, make sure it's, it's working for you. It can't be too extreme. I'm just doing geometry, not color. I'm gonna hit project history, and you can see, boom, I have the chest plate there is back to the original undo, but the the abs right there are what I sculpted. And so that's very useful, that's so cool. This is my favorite, the extractor brush. There's three different extractor brushes. And so we're gonna look at all of them. Here's the basic one. As you hold G, well, this is the effect it's gonna get, right? It's gonna basically take something to duplicate. So hit G, drag it along what you want to try and duplicate. There you go. And now as I drag, you can see that it tries to duplicate it to the best of its ability and you can get some instant geometry just like that. This is amazing. Um, I'm gonna try this. Oh, sorry. I gotta actually be selected the leg. I'm gonna try and just get this little crack here. That's a cool looking cr crack. So I hit G, save that out. And now as I drag this, you can see I get this. The possibilities with this are literally endless and I can't wait to play around with this in an actual sculpt. We're gonna try this one, this is the dots. I'm gonna to try to hit G and drag that. But now as I do it, you'll see that the dots only basically select the first thing. So this is similar to the, well, it's using the same thing that we talked about the, the free brush before. And so it's basically just a built-in functionality that's gonna take care of everything. Here I am playing around. If you're not getting what you want, you can increase the intensity. I'm going to actually cut into this instead. And what a great new feature. So the extractor, again, just G to, to get the shape, drag it along and play around and see what, what works for you. The last feature is called, it's render, then it's the fade opacity. I'm not gonna use this very much, but there you go, render fade opacity. And that's all the new features that they've talked about. There's a few other uh, settings that you can do that you can go and look at the the documentation, but that's it. So thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care, We the more you share this, the better. Um, I hope that this was helpful. Have a great day and watch some of our other videos. They're pretty good. All right, bye.